Hey everyone, it's Fanola Howard and this is Ask Fanola How. And this week is, um, yet again, another interesting question, but it's a really a question that I will probably have to stop myself speaking about because I just love it so much. So here is the question. As I kind of, I should have done exercises beforehand. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. Why is it important to be clear on my purpose in business? So I think a lot of you will know at this point that it's something I'm extremely passionate about. And that question invariably does come up of why does it matter? Why, you know, purpose is a bit woolly phenol, it's a bit kind of, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, it's the most important thing you will do in your business strategy, your marketing strategy, your life strategy, but I shall not, try not to digress this time, okay? So let us kind of focus, okay? So, and I made some notes, as you know, so I'll just refer to them because there's so much I could say about this, okay? The reason why we need to have purpose, clearly stated purpose in the business and why it's so important in business is because clarity of purpose stops the meandering. I have been looking at patterns of how businesses grow for over 25 years. I've been mapping them. I've been so interested in this whole idea of the entrepreneurial journey. You hear me talk about it all the time. And the thing that I've learned, and if you ask any entrepreneur, and I'm going to say things possibly, you may not like what I'm going to say, but so many entrepreneurs talk about this roller coaster ride, these highs and these lows, these ups and these downs. And they feel, most entrepreneurs feel that that's typical, okay? And it is typical because most entrepreneurs have that experience. But my experience, and this is why I'm bringing it up around purpose, is that that roller coaster ride actually stops with clarity of purpose. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to face tough times or things can be challenging, but you will always be faced with challenges of things that don't go fully right or things that go, go the way that you wanted them to go. But I've noticed from watching all these entrepreneurs that the minute that we focus on purpose, of clearly identifying what you're here for, that roller coaster ride smooths out. There is a great clarity that comes with knowing what you're here for that actually helps you define the road ahead. And I'm a real believer in knowing the journey before you take it. And this is one of the key things that needs to happen when you start your business, really digging deep and understanding what are you here for? What is the mission? What is the purpose, mission and vision of your business? Purpose is the starting point because it is that what are you here for? OK, and what I found is that two things happen when you have clarity of purpose. Well, two things will stop the roller coaster ride, actually. One is clarity of purpose. But the second thing is, and this is really important, is the will to actually go for it, the will to achieve that purpose. You can't have one without the other. So that's why it's really important that we have clarity of purpose in the business, why we're here and what are we willing to do to get there? What are we willing to do to achieve that purpose? When you have that, the journey just kind of smooths a little. It just uh, eliminates all the doubt and the indecision. And that's the biggest thing. It's not necessarily a roller coaster ride. It's often a meandering because of the indecision that's associated with not having clarity of purpose in a business. I tell you, it will change your business and your life when you spend the time digging deep and understanding purpose, okay? Your purpose. Second thing I kind of want to say to you is purpose is hard work, okay? Purpose is hard to own, okay? And when I start working with clients, and I'm knowing this from watching so many clients, is that when you start that process of knowing why you're here, of digging deep, and it requires digging deep, and it requires kind of pulling back a few layers to kind of get to the root of the stuff, because our lives are so kind of influenced by shoulds and what should I do and what will be acceptable to those people over there and acceptable, what do they want to hear? And that's really important, but not when you start. When you start, it is about owning your purpose because this and owning that purpose requires you to be vulnerable. But I tell you this, the vulnerability fades 
and the vulnerability transforms into bravery and courage and belief and passion because you know why you're here and you've decided to do something about it. So while that's difficult at the very start and people, lots of people shy away from that, I'm so used to seeing that. So I want to reassure you, it's completely normal to shy away from that deeper work, but it will transform everything you do when you take the time, when you embrace the vulnerability and allow yourself, it is even about allowing yourself to dream that you could make that difference. That thing that you found that motivates you to start your business, that you could actually affect change here. And if all of us actually grabbed our purposes in our hands and really owned them and got off the fence and did something to actually make that difference, how much better this world would be. And, I'm, and I mean that, like, and I mean that very passionately and very emotionally, actually, because I see the transformations that happen when someone is brave enough to state it, to own it, to do something about it. Hmm. Thank you, Rachel. I'm glad you agree. Yeah, so normal to shy away, to shy away from purpose. But let's not do that anymore. You know, it's such a waste of time. Okay, so again, I, t I did warn you I was going to rant a little. <laughs> so, okay, my next thing that I wanted to talk to you about it. Oh, yeah. Purpose doesn't mean everything has to be fully formed. Just because you have a clearly stated purpose, which is huge, by the way, <laughs> as I just said and waxed lyrically on, it doesn't have to be fully formed. In fact, it's better that it's not fully formed or an expectation that it's fully formed. What it does is it defines the trajectory. It defines this space of where you want to go, that you see this thing that you want to achieve. It, def it decides and defines the trajectory. But things emerge on the journey that allow that to be more fully expressed it means that, you know, people say it's about agile planning, you know, and, and that's a nice term. But in a very human space, it just means that you are more open to how you can do it better at every point because you learn on the journey what's resonating, what's working. You will make mistakes. It doesn't have to be a roller coaster ride. You will make mistakes, but you will learn from those mistakes to course correct. But, you st but the purpose piece sets the, traje the trajectory for where you're going. Then you create the space, you allow yourself the space to be watching. And you see, when you have purpose and clarity, you're not looking at anything else. You're looking about how am I going to do this? How am I going to achieve this? How will I get there? And it means you have this beautiful focus that keeps you on track. Again, I come back to my story about it's not a roller coaster, it's often a meandering. We want to remove or reduce the amount of meandering. And with clarity of purpose, you do that. You smooth the journey. Yeah, it'll be a little bit wobbly. It's always a little bit wobbly. It's normal. But you smooth that journey to get you there faster, to actually give you the staying power when things go wrong because you know why you're here. It helps you focus on what matters to keep going. And that's again why I also talk about passion that's aligned with purpose, because we need the staying power. The purpose gives us the reason to be here. The passion keeps us moving through it. So again, another reason to do this. OK, so I kind of want to give you an example of, you know, purpose in action. Two really good examples. Um, one is Ikea, who I just I did a research project on them um, a few years ago with the lovely Marty Newmeyer. And, um, but when we looked at Ikea and Ikea's reason for being, now Ikea is very, very strong in uh, their presence. You see that their ad campaigns all focus around this idea of the wonderful everyday. But if I tell you what their mission or their purpose is, and they're actually intertwined purpose and mission, right? So purpose is what you're here for. Mission is how you're going to do it. Ikea kind of wraps them up together. And they said, and it comes like they, that guy, Ingvar, as I read it, Ingvar Kamprad in Sweden set it up in 1943. It's the same, pur same purpose for all this time. And it is, and, the, and we feel it, you know, we feel it in our hearts and in our guts and it makes us fall in love with things, you know. 
to create a better everyday life for the many people, okay? So really loaded, it's a very simple phrase. It's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten words that define the trajectory of Ikea. So they, he asked this question, this is where it comes from, right? Why are all the beautiful products only made for such few buyers? It must be possible to offer good design and function at low prices. So, I mean, that was his reason. So he then honed it a little and stated very clearly to create a better everyday life for the many people, heavily loaded. Everyday life, so it's designed for the everyday accessible design you could have beautiful home with accessible stuff that you that is you know makes life easier and it's the everyday easier more than that it's for the many people he wanted everyone to have a beautiful home that had design-led products in their home to make their lives better what powerful purpose and it, and you can see this trajectory that's set very, very on, early on. And it comes to life in so many things. When I think about the ad, ad campaigns, and we all know these, we can hear the music in our heads, the wonderful everyday spoken in this Swedish voice. And we love them because it's playful. We, it gives us an idea, an aspirational idea of what our everyday lives could be. And our everyday lives could be better, yeah, but could be wonderful. So it's an, ex, you know, it, 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 um, the purpose gives uh, life to your campaigns, gives life to your communication and gives meaning. And without purpose, how can you have that? That's one of my big questions. And so like, so when they started very early on, they had, they, uh, so when they met adversity, so people didn't believe at the very start in 1943, yeah, you can't sell us these beautiful things. They're so cheap. How come? So what happened? The answer was they created the first showroom so people could look and touch and feel the product. And you know how much that's now a cornerstone of how IKEA works. The second one was in 1956, they looked at um, the Lovett table and they went, and it's this beautiful kind of uh, ovally table. It's quite... <coughs> quite well recognizable and they were like oh what if we just take the legs off and hence flat pack furniture was born and again that made it a better everyday because people could buy it flat packed you could reduce storage just made it easier it then made uh, the whole instruction thing of people putting it together themselves that all contributed to this beautifully articulated purpose of the better everyday for the many people I could go on and on and on about that, so I won't, okay? Um, I'll put a link, I think, to some of their history. But you should just look at their history on their website, actually, of where it came from. It's really interesting because you can see how it all evolved. And even now they're doing things like, so we've got the Better Every Day, which is the purpose, clearly stated purpose. Their ad campaign is the Wonderful Every Day. And then they added things like, you know, the Better Every Day allowed them to bring things in like for smart homes, and now it's the sustainable every day because they account for 1% of the world's usage of wood. So they're wanting to do things, initiatives that make it sustainable because that's what matters. So it's, but it's still the same purpose. It still sets the trajectory. They learn, they move, they grow, and they still, they stay in tune with the marketplace, with their chosen customer, and they stay on track with their, with their purpose. Love it, love it. Okay, I know I'm really excited. So, okay, you just have to forgive me. Okay, I'm going one more. Okay, here's my next page. Apple is the other one. And Apple is interesting. And you see, the, the way we can see some of this stuff is through their ad campaigns. But here is what Steve Jobs came up with. Not so beautifully written, I don't think. But when you think about it, it makes sense. To make a contribution to the world by making tools for the mind that advance humankind. Tools for the mind that advance humankind. That was their clearly stated purpose. And in about 2019, I think uh, they wrapped it up a little bit neater in terms of having great products. But I still like this idea, tools for the mind that advance humankind. And if you think about this, if you think about that's what the purpose was and how 
everything got rolled out. And this allowed people to self-identify with Apple because their ad campaigns came out around that famous 1984 ad about all the people who are dressed in grey with these mundane lives, with these staid lives, with their brains not working, they were just automatons and that they just shattered that idea that this tool would help you enhance your mind, enhance humankind and it actually made you feel what it'd be like to have an Apple product. And you know that they were the first with, you know, the iPhone, iTunes, iPods, i, I, I everything. And iLife is what they came up with at one point. Check out their ad campaigns that really fit in with this idea of purpose. And so one is 1984. The other one that I love is the Think Different ad. And I think that was in around, I can't remember the, name, the age, but the Think Different was about uh, showing all these black and white uh, film imagery of uh, Einstein, of Jim Henson, of all these creative minds. And it was a salute. It was, here's to the crazy ones. So it meant that you went, well, I would like to be a crazy one too, because I'm really, you know, creative and I want to make a difference in the world. And it was that whole idea of, here's to the crazy ones, because they're the ones that change the world. So if you want to change the world, you've got to use an Apple product, which directly connects into their purpose. The other one that I love was from 2006 to 2009, they launched 66 TV ads that were, I'm a Mac, I'm a PC. They're fun, actually, to show the difference between the, you know, this whole, and even built on the 1984 idea, these boring people who just like spreadsheets. Forgive me, anybody who likes spreadsheets. Well, I like spreadsheets also, but you know, I'm a PC, PC and it was, it's, it's a limited view. And they actually didn't insult uh, Microsoft or PCs or anything like that. They actually talked about PCs uh, as a, and they're saying, that's great, you're really good at that. But what we're really good at is film and movies and photography and creativity. And again, keeping in mind with, Here's to the crazy ones, think different. Everything was consistent and everything was about that whole idea, tools for the mind. You know, the creative tools, the creative spirit, the people who make a difference. That's purpose, that's purpose led. And that means that everyone is on the same page. Everyone is developing and growing your business in that same direction. It works, this is why you have purpose. Will I keep going? <laughs> so the other one is, the other one I want to kind of, because I keep going and I'll have to stop because these are supposed to be short. But purpose also is the source of your authenticity. You know, that's my big message. And when, like, how can you be authentic when you don't know what you're here for? So, like really, I mean, I really feel to take a moment how can you be authentic if you don't know what you're here for? More than that, your customers, when they see your purpose, when they know your purpose, will believe you and believe that, that you're authentic because everything you're doing is feeding to that purpose. And they'll forgive you when you make mistakes. I make loads of them. They will forgive you when you make mistakes because they know you'll get on track again. And that will make for loyal customers. And that will help your business succeed because you're on track and you are authentic and serving your purpose in the world and being brave enough to do that. I hope that helps you. I think it's a good place to finish. Let me share my purpose with you. My purpose is to make it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed. I feel really passionate about that because I've seen some of the things that happen to entrepreneurs and businesses that are not necessary and can be stopped and can be prevented. And I feel the best way to do that is help you know the journey before you take it. So how I'm doing it is showing you the journey before you take it. And before I forget, because <laughs> I was about to forget this, if you'd like to know more about purpose and how to position your business with purpose, I have a free 90 minute webinar coming up very soon. I have two dates, one on the 31st of August one on the 8th of September. Click on the link in the bio. 
or wherever the link is <laughs> and join me because I think you'll enjoy it. I'm passionate about it. Have a great day. This has been Ask Finola How, episode 52. Take care.